Good evening, everyone, and we are back to 93.4, the True Agriculture Station. And I'm your speaker, Carly Patterson. And this is for all of you who are interested in understanding the consumer's willingness to pay for organic or genetically modified food. In today's society, consumers are highly influenced by the terminology of organic and genetically modified food, which impacts their willingness to pay. The only label shining throughout grocery stores is certified organic, whereas the identification of GM foods is practically non-existent. The current rule in America is that the first generation GM crops do not need to be labeled. However, the second generation must be. This rolls right into the discussion of establishing a tolerance level for which food can be marketed as non-GM. As of now, America does not have a mandatory labeling policy for GM foods. However, the European Union does. For instance, non-GM marketed products can contain less than 0.9% of GM ingredients. This also happens to be one of the most extreme thresholds of measurement. Two surveys were conducted. One was focused on the willingness of a consumer to purchase first-generation GM, second-generation GM, and original foods, while the other aimed to target the tolerance level of GM ingredients a consumer is willing to pay for a non-GM product. The survey concluded that consumers feel to be indifferent for non-GM foods with 1% threshold difference. In fact, 95% non-GM foods are not any more valuable than foods with unknown GM. Also, products that are modified to improve production, such as milk and cereal, were viewed less favorably than products with unknown GM contents. Surprisingly, the willingness to pay for either organic or GM foods is about the same, and each has its own type of consumers. In response to the second survey results, consumers preferred second generation and organic production over first generation.